Hello, was macht ihr? I hope everyone is gesund, stark und freilach, begasch mich zum Beruchnis. I hope everyone is healthy, strong and happy, physically, spiritually. Today is a very, very special day. Chof Tevis, the Amy Lula Yotzeit of the Rambam. Moshe ad Moshe lekom kemoshe. This is an unbelievable statement that from Moshe Rabbeinu till Reb Moshe ben Maimon, there was no one that could compare. And this week's parsha, Vashgacha Pratis, we start learning about Moshe Rabbeinu. And we'll take lessons from Moshe Rabbeinu and we'll see how it reflected itself in the life of the Rambam. And this coming Tuesday, Mr. Hashem, is Chovdala Tevis, the Yorzeit Hilule of the Alter Rebbe. And the Rebbe spoke many times of the connections between the Alter Rebbe and the Rambam. And we'll speak today about the relevance of those tzaddikim and what lessons we could take. But as usual, we'll start with a prayer. Hareini mekabel olai mitzasei shel ve'ahavta le'yachol kamoicho. I take upon myself the mitzasei of loving my fellow Jew as myself. Today we're going to speak about one of the most important topics in life. And I would suggest that probably if I went to Harvard or Yale or Cambridge or Oxford universities, and I took the leadership course, it would probably be the most expensive course. Today, we see how there's a dearth in leadership. I mean, I don't follow the news, but I do know of some big news. Like, you know, what's going on in the world, which everyone knows about. For example, Trump and Biden. Without besmirching individuals, but when you think about it, a country like United States of America that has something like 305 million people or 310 million people, and to think that those two became the president of the United States of America is mind-boggling for the person who Trump is and for the person who Biden is. Like, what's going on? And the same thing, we look at England, for example, where there was three prime ministers Last year, within the space of, I don't know, four weeks, one went out, another came in, then they went out, and another one came in. So we see there's problems in leadership. And the same thing when we think about Eretz Yisrael. Right now, for the first time, after five elections, there was a clear government majority, etc. So it seems there's a problem in deciding leadership. And in general, my shver... My shver was Reb Nosson Gorali. He was a big masculine chassidus. And he had a way of speaking that every single one of his words were measured and diamonds. So he said once to me, I used to think that the problem is there are no followers, there are no good receivers, there are no good recipients. But then I realized there are no good teachers, there are no good influencers. And then I realized there are no good influencers, there are no good leaders, and there are no good followers. Now the truth is, it's a, it's a discussion. Is it the, the, the people that make the man? That means we have to choose a leader, give him support, and show that we're behind him, and that will make the leader? Or, which that's one side of the argument, we need people to appoint a leader. And show the leader that they have some, that he has support, or the other the other side of the coin is, but there's no leaders, there's no real leaders that are selfless, that that are that are that are that, are, that have a real clarity, etc., etc. So there's what to discuss. But in any case, <laughs> the relevance of what we're going to discuss today is to every single person, as the Rebbe says many times, and we're in Shnas Hakel this year, how. The father, the teacher, the leader, the counselor, the head counselor, call it whatever you want, all of these are like the melech in the midst of Hakel. So there's an aspect of the melech, the king, who leads the nation that's in every single one of us. So every father is a leader in a certain sense, every teacher is a leader, etc., etc. So every single person has a leader dimension in him, and therefore we have to understand leadership. So today, I hope it's going to 
it's probably going to be a longer video because I want to talk about a couple of episodes in this week's Pasha where I love it, love it when it's just clear. We have the stories. There's nothing as powerful as stories, as reality, as the Metziah Sadvarim. So in this week's parsha, if I was giving a course <laughs> in, in in university, I would say leadership skills from Torah. So in this week's parsha, we're going to see the main point of leadership is the idea that you're selfless and that you think of the other. And this comes across so many times in this week's parsha. We say that the Alter Rebbe said that we have to live with the Pasha of the week. So in this week's Pasha, we're going to see five stories of Meisha Rabbeinu. So not only you're hit with this idea and this lesson once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And then we're going to come, we'll see what comes as a result of that, his first revelation, Meisha Rabbeinu's first revelation. So, okay, let's start where we see what is the first time when we spoke when we speak about Moshe Rabbeinu and what's the first thing that the Torah says that he does. So the first thing that it says is Vayigdal Moshe, and Moshe grew up by Yehitzel Echov, and he went out to his brothers by Yarbisivlesa, and he saw the burdens. And then the Pasuk says, Vayar Ish Mitzri, and he saw a story with an Egyptian. But that's really another story. As the Medr speaks about, Vayetzel Echa Vayar Besev Loisam, means that he went out to concentration camp Pisaim and Ramses, and he saw the slave labor, and he saw the taskmasters over there. Not an individual story with how he saw one whipping a Jew, which is another story as we'll soon discuss, but the general idea. So we hear on these words, Vayigdal Meishe, Vayarbis of Loisam. First of all, you could say, Vayigdal Meishe, what's a sign of greatness? What's a sign of maturity? Vayigdal means he grew older, but Vayigdal means a godl. What's a real mature person? That Vayetel Echov is able to go out of himself and see the other person's life. But seeing is not enough. Vayar And what does Rashi say over here? One of my favorite Rashis, and I think we spoke about it once. No san eino v'liboy lies meitzar aleyem. He focused his eyes and heart to be distressed over them. So that means like this. We've spoken about this also many times. There's sympathy and there's empathy. There's one thing that we say is chesed, and there's another thing that we say that's rachamim. According to Chesidus, we say that a cotton could have chesed, but it doesn't have rachamim. A child could be generous, a child could be very giving, but he doesn't have empathy. He could have sympathy, but he doesn't have empathy, because empathy comes with a maturity that not only you're able to give of yourself to another person, but you actually feel the other person. You can put yourself in that person's shoes. It's a whole other level. But wait, there's more, and this is the beauty of Rashi. It cannot happen by itself. It's not automatic. When we say kindness, kindness means you see something, and it could be a knee-jerk reaction, that you're kind. But when it comes to empathy, when it, sympathy can be automatic, so to speak. But when it comes to empathy, that means that you're really, really feeling what the other person is going through. Not that you have mercy, not that you're just giving him, but you're actually experiencing it. How does that happen? So Rashi says, No san eina v'libo elios meitzar aleyem. You have to be focused. You have to, you have to, you have to, it has to come through an action. You have to concentrate. That when you see the other person's life, okay, give me five minutes. Give me ten minutes. I don't know how long it will take. But it does mean you have to take a pause and now envision, visualize what it means to be in that person's shoes. 
And that's empathy. So that's the first thing that it says over here. So we see by Yidam Meishe, what's the first sign of greatness? Empathy. And this is the trait of this week's Pasha, as we're going to see. We're discussing now the first leader of Am Yisrael, which is Meishe Rebbeinu. So we have to see what the Torah says. And in the space of a couple of Pesukim, they can count on your fingers, we have the whole story. So that's the first thing. Number one, he goes out of himself. Number two, he's in such a way that he can actually experience empathy, what the other person's going through. And then it says, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not an act. It just means you felt what the other person's going through. But then it says, Vayar ish mitzri make ish ivri me'echov. But then he saw an Egyptian hitting another Jew. So you immediately, he's a prince of Egypt, he's brought up in royalty, and now he's going to do something which he's going to have to become eventually a fugitive. I forgot what it's called, I think bystander syndrome. There's a word, bystander something. It's a name, it's a coin term about, it's been documented, how many people could witness some sort of injustice and say, I don't want to get involved. I'm going to mind my own business. <laughs> And over here we see by Meshach Rabbeinu always the opposite way. Get involved. Get bothered. Care. Show compassion. And always stand for the underdog. And that's what it means over here. He right away identified. It's a Jew. And he's being harassed. And he's being assaulted. And he's being oppressed. Do nothing. And as we see from Rashi, this, 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 this uh, Arab, this Mitri, sorry, this Mitri was doing terrible things, molesting. I don't want to get into it. See Rashi. And it's very, very relevant to the situation today in the world where people are doing things and some people think, let's be quiet about it, let's cover it up. Over here, Moshe Rabbeinu takes action. No one was going to do anything. So, story number two, after Vayarvis of Loisam, is he takes action. Wherever there's an underdog, whenever there's a victim, we do something. To stop the injustice. That's the second story. Then comes the third story. Right after that. There's a reason why the Torah says this story right after. Because they witnessed what Moshe Rabbeinu did. Even though Moshe Rabbeinu thought that no one had seen. But the message over here is. The next day he goes out and he sees two Jews having an argument. <laughs> but these two Jews happen to be nasty characters. Nasty characters. Difficult people. So, he could also say, don't get involved. But what's bothering him? Really two things. Number one, you're physically raising your hands to another Jew. Rahman al Islam. That's number one. Now, even though they're both nasty and Meshar Bin knows it, but you know what? When you see two Jews arguing, it's just something's wrong. Something, it's not the way it should be. It should bother you if two people are on a machlaikis. Like it says, Lagaba Arin. Oyev Shalom, Vereidev Shalom. So when you see two people having an argument, you try to bring peace. But the Pusuk stresses the main thing is, first of all, prevent the other person from getting harmed physically. So Meshul does something. And then does he get it? It's etc. Et so like, ah, he gets involved, which he could have easily just been a bystander. And what does he get in return? Does anybody give me a shakoyach? Of course not. He gets harassed because of it. So that's the third story. Moshe sees something. He's not the bystander. On the contrary, he takes action. Because wherever there's injustice, 
We have to take a stand and do whatever we can to bring benefit. Then comes the next story. Right after that, he runs away. And he goes to Midian. And then he comes to the well. And it says that Yisrael had seven daughters. And they drew water. But shepherds came. Vayigorshum, and what does the pasuk say? Vayokom Moshe. The words Vayokom Moshe means he took a stand. Vayishion, and he helped them. Vayashkes tzaynam. Not only he stood up for the daughters, but then he actually physically, manually got involved and he watered the sheep. So here again, the stranger just came to town. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you getting involved? You're so annoying. You're such a do-gooder. The stranger just came to town and the shepherds, Lush and Rabbim, there's a whole gang and the whole gang is preying on weaker people. You say his daughters. And Moshe Rabbeinu, one man, stands up to these people and tells them, I'm sorry, he stands up to them and he prevents them from harassing and annoying and doing whatever they wanted to do to Yisrael's daughter. And from the next time when, when the daughters repeated to Yisrael, it seems, I think, if I may say so, a more powerful lotion. Before the Pasuk says, which sometimes can be translated as he helped. But it's Ilonu means he rescued us, he saved us. It's a bit more powerful, I would think. And that implies that, that who knows? To what degree these shepherds were bringing harm to Yisrael's daughters. In any case, so Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't sit by, but he gets involved. So that's number four. Number one, Vayar Besavleisam. Number two, Vayachas HaMitzri. Number three, when he saw the two people arguing, Das Maviran. Number four, he takes, he pushes away the shepherds that are starting with Yisrael's daughters. And number five, where the Pasuk then continues, This is the beginning of the redemption, where it speaks about the king, and it got even worse. And then it says the whole story with Moshe and the snare, as we'll soon talk about, and then the Ebishter chooses him as the leader, after much dialogue back and forth. And everyone knows, why is the Pasuk saying, Because that's the introduction to the whole story. Who is the future Jewish leader? A shepherd of lambs, of sheep. And everyone knows the two Medrashim, one Medrash is that there was one lamb that ran away and that Moshe Rabbeinu ran after the one lamb. It's a Pasuk in Tilim also. And then he actually picked up the lamb and physically carried him back to the rest of the flock. Then there's another medrash that says, similar by Dovra Melech, that Moshe Rabbeinu was careful in how he dealt with the youngest lambs, the middle-aged ones, and the seniors. Each one eating of the grass that was the most befitting to them, the degree of how hard the, the, the grass was the, on the ground. So that's how he made the system of how they were feeding. So the Medrash says, because the Ebishter saw how Moshe Rabbeinu was a Roye Nema and a faithful shepherd, therefore he was chosen to be the leader of Kal Yisrael. So obviously, you could say, what's the most important trait in being a Jewish leader? So if you say a good heart, selfless, this is the most essential. Of course, it's a lot more than that. You have to be able to influence you have to be able to make a team. You have to be the greatest. There's nothing to talk about. Of all of them, you know, etc., etc. But if we talk about the most essential, it means that you're full of compassion, care, and concern, kindness, etc. And that's, I once heard a very good saying, and I, want, I think I once said this before, where it says, you know, in secular literature, who's the hero? The one who slays the dragon and gets the girl. And in, in Kedusha and in Torah, 
Who's the hero? The Jewish heroes are shepherds that chase after the lamb and nurture them faithfully. So one of them stresses physical prowess and the other stresses character. And it's about selflessness and it's about care, compassion, and concern. Now, before we get to the snare, later on in the Parsha, there's a Balaturim that makes this very clear. And the Balaturim, where the Balaturim says in the Pasik, Vayamein Ha'om, that the nation believed in Moshe. And the Balaturim says, Vayamein, Beis Mamasayis. This part, word, Vayamein, says twice. Vayamein Ha'om, over here, about Moshe, that they believed in Moshe. Vayamein Achish David, and Achish believed David. And then the Balaturim says like this, Shnei panosim tevim amdul Yisrael. Two good leaders were for the Jewish nation. Moshe and David. And both of them are shepherds, by the way. Moshe Omar Mecheni no. Moshe told the Ebush to erase me from the Torah. Which means, if you're going to punish the Jewish people, punish me. In other words, take me out of the Torah. There's no me without the people. When they wish to punish the Jewish people, David Amel said, but these flock, what do they do? He's referring to the Yidin. Hurt me, don't hurt them. So in other words, by both Moshe and by both David, we see that the dedication and devotion to the followers is absolute. And absolute means they always come first. They're serving the public. They're completely selfless. So because they believe in the people <laughs> and they love the people, so the Balatur makes clear because they believe in the followers, therefore the followers believe in them and therefore they're the greatest leaders. So the greatest leaders are the ones built on selflessness, ready to give themselves over Mesir Nefesh completely for the followers. Shnei parnosim nemonim hoyu they were totally loyal to the flock. Olakach heminu vahem. They believed in the people. They gave themselves over for the people. They are better than me. Harm me, not them. And therefore, reciprocally, they believed in Moshe and David. So it's a clear barat to them. Now I want to go to the snare. So what's the first revelation that Moshe Abinu has after this whole story? And the, the, the first revelation he has from the Ebishta, the first encounter he has with the Ebishta is the snap. <clears throat> what's the message of the snap? So first I'm going to say something which is in connection to everything we said before. Since Moshe Rabbeinu went out of himself, he put himself in their shoes. So what does the Ebishta tell Moshe? What does Rashi say? Why was it a thorn bush? Just like Moshe Rabbeinu went out of himself and felt the pain of the Yidden, so too there's a medrashim that says that he felt the whip, the lashes of the whip. That's how much he wanted to feel their situation. So too the Ebrishter tells Moshe, Hashem is with us. He feels the pain, whatever that means. That's why it's thorns. Thorns are painful if you get stuck with a thorn. And the Abish is telling Moshe, I feel the pain of Klal Yisrael. Which that's a Chiddush Nifli, you could think. God is indifferent. There's the God of the philosophers. To say he has feelings, that's a degradation. That shows on a lowliness, on a symptom. And here we're saying no. You know what? Just like you felt the pain, I want you to know that when it comes to Klal Yisrael, the first thing every year is to know, I'm with you. I'm not indifferent. I also feel the pain. So that's one message. And this message comes to Hemshech to everything that came before. But this week, someone told me a pshat, one of the pshatim in the Babar Benel, that he says, on Vasnein and Ucha, and I think it's unbelievable, and it's very connected to leadership. You know, leadership is one of the most um, hard jobs. 
You know, there's a saying, I once read, it could be, I mentioned this already before, that some football coach told his team, we don't got to beat the other team, we just got to wear him down. And I love that quote, and it's very true, and I see it in life, and I think all parents and all teachers and educators and all leaders could say the same thing, something similar, that we don't got to beat <laughs> the leader or the teacher, we just got to wear them down, i.e. students and children could sometimes wear down their parents and their teachers, willingly or unwillingly, but that's the way it is, you get worn down. And we see also that this is the lesson from the first story with Dasav Avriyad, his first encounter with another Yid. Because first it says, Vayarbis of Laysam, and then the first dialogue that Moshe Rabbeinu has with another Yid, where he sees a machlek is going on, every two Jews, there's three opinions, so he sees two Jews having an argument, and he's saying, come on, you don't have to have an argument, we can get along. So he's trying to prevent, he wants to defuse the argument so it shouldn't get violent, it shouldn't get physical. And what does he get for it? A smack in the face, figuratively, figuratively speaking. Butt out, mind your own business. So <laughs> that's what happens many times in life. When you want to take action, you don't get appreciated for it. You don't get a thank you for it. You get a slap in the face. So when it comes to leadership, in today's society, and this is so mind-boggling, the Pshat Dababinel, there's a term, it's called burnout. And everybody speaks about it, how if you're teaching long enough, or if you're a leader long enough, we suffer from burnout. Guess what the Ababinel says, Pshat, that you, this was a message from Moshe Rabbeinu, that even though you will be a leader, and you're going to have to deal with us. <laughs> what? Meraglim, koirach, mai merorim, yada, yada, yada. It's the hardest job. It's mamish, mamish, mamish. Unimaginable, the hardships of being a leader. Therefore, the Eibishta is maftiach. And he tells Moshe Rabbeinu, you will never burn out. There's taka, fire. This taka, it's not easy. It's going to be a rough ride. But nevertheless, you should know. You could do it. You have what it takes. The resilience, the courage, the stamina, etc., etc., to go through whatever it's going to entail. And I'm telling you now, Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm letting you know that you will thrive, even though it's going to be a rough ride. So I think it's a major lesson. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu, you will never reach burnout. It's taka fire, but you're never burning out. The connection, we don't, have to, we don't have to explain all the lessons that we just spoke about. It's obvious. And now just to connect it to the Alter Rebbe and to the Rambam. I said this once before, I believe the Rambam was the first leader that was global. He was in Spain, he was in Egypt, and he dealt with questions that were around the globe in letters, and he writes in the Agdama that the safers kick cotton the Godel. He wasn't only, his target audience wasn't only the people of his country. His target audience is the entire Klal Yisrael. So he's writing a work which is going to help everyone. And the Rambam also, by the way, speaks about his daily schedule. You could say he had no life. Being a doctor and dealing with patients all the time, etc., etc. So on the Rambam we see very much the way he's living every minute of his life, thinking about the klal, others, and how to help others. That's the Rambam. And the same thing with Alter Rebbe, the fact that he said that this Sefer, the whole purpose of the Sefer, is ki he wrote a Sefer to make Yiddishkeit more accessible, more relatable to every single person in a real way. And he writes also in the Zagdoma that it's the Chuvis al Kol And it's based on following 
אשר גילו לפני כל תלום מסלימי, אשר חיבה, דיבה של חיבה, ימוצא בינינו. So he writes in that dumb himself, that there was affection between him and his followers. He was there always, always, for decades, listening to their innermost issues and problems. And then afterwards, he recorded it, and he wrote the Sefer that was going to help everyone. He wrote that the Sefer is the solution. So imagine a person needs advice. A person, any seeking, spiritually seeking searcher or seeker, which any person really sooner or later comes to that realm, that area where he's looking for meaning and for purpose. And this is the Sefer he said that will help you find meaning and purpose in a way that will be relatable to you and you'll feel that you found the answer. So we see from Moshe Rabbeinu, from the Rambam, and from the Alta Rebbe, what does it mean leadership, how much you have to be involved with your flock, and the Ibishu should help that each and every single one of us should take the lessons that we learn from all of these leaders, and we'll be better parents, we'll be better fathers, we'll be better teachers, and we'll be better yidden all around in our interpersonal relationships with every single other person. Posting from my home, Bez Shemiz Borich, Good Shabbos, your man in Melbourne.